My name is Antonia Partridge and I call my land Living Hills Homestead and Permaculture Project. I've been a WOOF host since 2003 and I'm located in Northern California in Mendocino County, uh, about 15 miles outside of the town of Willits. So people often ask me why am I a WOOF host and or why do people choose to WOOF and, and it, it is that valuable social experience of getting to stay in the home of a local person. I get contacted by probably three or four people a week that want to come out um, during the spring and summer. People are really great. I would say that nine out of ten woofers are great. I know of people that used to travel as woofers when they were younger and they choose to be host kind of for the same reasons that a person might choose to host a foreign exchange student. I get to have my little homestead life here where I'm really tied to the land and the world comes to me and I wouldn't get to meet people from Namibia and from Brazil and from Argentina and from the Netherlands and from New Orleans and from British Columbia if I wasn't a wolf host and I get to sort of travel vicariously through them, get to know them, I follow their blogs as they're doing their world travels and that's great. One of my favorite things about Woof is having so much help. I wouldn't get nearly so much done as, as I'm able to, and I really appreciate all their hard work. And I think that they really appreciate um, learning to do the natural building, learning to do the gardening, and that it's a good exchange. So when I have Woofers come, we'll work on whatever needs to be done on the land. I don't necessarily expect the people that come and stay with me to have a lot of experience. I understand that people that come to Woof are doing it because they want to learn. In the springtime, in say uh, April, May, June, there's a lot of work in the garden. Later in the year, as, you know, June, July, August, September, the focus turns more to the natural building projects. That'll be mixing cob, stacking the straw bales, just building the house. And then um, we also spend time, you know, cooking and hanging out in the evening. Sometimes we have a campfire or, you know, if I've got a real beginning guitar player woofer, I'll give them guitar lessons. And if I've got a woofer that knows more guitar than me, I get guitar lessons. And um, I've got a pretty nice uh, library of like sustainable living topic books and they can hang out in the hammock and read a book or take a drive and go visit the redwoods. We're about 30 miles from the ocean. So if they want to visit the beach, they can do that. It's just, you know, a, like a maybe hour drive to get to the ocean from here. There's a swimming hole right here on the property. So um, I really try with the woofers to keep in mind that they're volunteers and that they're only working a 20 hour week, which means that we can shape our schedule to the weather. I want to be down at the river lounging on a sun-baked river rock mm -hmm. and swimming when it's 105 degrees out. So, you know, we'll work first thing in the morning and it's a pretty relaxed schedule when they get the afternoons off. There's with hosts that are going to want people who will come for a weekend or you know just a week, a short stay, and there's some with hosts that want people to come for the whole season. Anybody who's interested in woofing can just look through the huge woof book and read the descriptions in the woof book and find somebody that's going to match up with their own interests. If I was to describe the ideal woofer, it would be someone who is able to come for the whole season. They're going to be comfortable staying in a tent, solar showers, someone who's got good communal living skills. It would be someone who can eat a diet really similar to my own, which means uh, lots of whole grains, lots of fruits and vegetables, dairy, homegrown eggs. I try to support the local independent health food store and, um, and try to buy what's in season when I am buying food as much as I can. My conventional or traditional education is from University of California at Davis where I studied horticulture. And then in addition to that, I did a lot of reading of more alternative methods. I took a permaculture designers course at Occidental Arts and Ecology Center that was very valuable. I also took natural building courses at um, a natural building school called Emerald Earth and with a woman named Becky B who's written a book on cob building. I took a class on straw bale building at Real Goods that's down in Hopland, also here in Mendocino County. 
on this piece of land, I do great with potatoes, I do great with onions, I do great with the brassica crops like broccoli and kale. Um, in the warm season, there's lots of squash, there's tomatoes and peppers and eggplants. 90% of the fruits and vegetables that people eat when they're staying here, we grow here. I'm growing raspberries, blackberries, and strawberries, and blueberries. In a few years, we'll be having all of our apples, pears, peaches, cherries, nectarines coming from the land. So this is my vegetable garden. I've got about 20 beds that are all 16 feet long and four feet wide. I'd like to have this bed be what in permaculture terms is called like a zone two garden where I'm growing more staple crops like the garlic gets planted all at once and harvested all at once and stored and used over time. And up by the house, I'm developing a new garden site that's gonna be the zone one garden. And that's where I'll be able to have the crops that you just take a little bit at a time, like the culinary herbs, the salad tomatoes, um, cucumbers and peppers and eggplants will go up in the new garden area up by the house. As I move the salad and kitchen garden crops up there, more beds will become available and I wanna be able to grow a lot more of the storage crops like um, like winter squash and potatoes and onions and garlic and just continue expanding the garden and have more and more beds so that um, I'm continually have the goal of reducing the amount of uh, food that I'm buying from the store and increasing the amount of food that I'm growing and using from the land. So that's my place. Thanks for visiting.